Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is February 5th, 2022. Before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk, risk tolerance. All right. Starting with the SPX, as we always do. Um, yeah, so we have this potential topping pattern, right? I have the dotted line here because we don't know if this is going to be a right shoulder or not. Um, but it is kind of constructive because we regained the 200 day. This should have been, in my opinion, this was set up to be at least a bear flag and a breakdown, but it didn't break down. And that is, I think, really important. Um, it retook the 200 day. It kind of came back. In my opinion, this was a, a retest right over here and, and it held. So I think that is a very positive um, outcome so far. Could it roll back over? Absolutely. You know, you have now flattening of moving averages, right? I mean, if you really kind of zoom in here, you kind of see that things are kind of really starting to get flat here, flattening out. So, you know, if price can make a stand right here, that would definitely be the, the bullish scenario, right? Boom and boom. If it rolls over and continues lower, you know, that's the obviously the bearish scenario. And then you have to watch this neckline really closely because if that neckline breaks, that'd be a problem. Um, but that would be the next area of support here, overhead, maybe a little resistance. Um, but again, it was a decent, I, I feel like it was a decent day in growth names, even with interest rates rising. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I think that was good. Anyway, let's keep going. RSP, uh, equal weight S&P. And you see it was basically even, but again, the 200 day, which is this red line, Again, it held. And I think that's the important thing. It, you know, the bears could have pushed it down. Now, the bulls didn't really run with the ball either, but the bears could have pushed it down and they weren't able to. And I think that is a very um, positive scenario. Looking at the cues, uh, the cues are still under the 200 day. But again, um, you know, you have this kind of, you know, push up into resistance. It pulled back some, and then it kind of, you know, had a decent day, right? You know, was it phenomenal? It wasn't. And are we under the 200-day again? We are. Um, but with all that being said, that's kind of how bottoms are made. Is this the bottom? I, I don't know. Um, but now we have areas to manage risk against, right? Maybe this is a higher low, right? Low, higher low. Now, we, you know, that could be constructive. So let's keep an open mind. Obviously, if it rolls back over, you know, this is obviously the, uh, you know, this 339-ish area is the, is the area to watch. But if this is a higher low, then we can get back above the 200-day. Then all it did was flatten out and never really start to decline. That's a very positive scenario. And the equal weight cues, um, again, still below it, still has the potential for, you know, a large head and shoulders pattern right? Had the small one that actually confirmed and, and broke down from. Um, yeah, so came up to here. Is it going to come back this way and create this, this right shoulder? I don't know. Or is this the higher low that we've been talking about? We'll find out um, probably this week. Um, but I do, again, I, I like how growth has been acting the last couple of days. I think that's been kind of constructive. Um, let's look at IWM. I look at mid caps. And here's mid caps, right? So had every chance to break down, had this kind of breaky downy look here, right? Um, but then it didn't and came back up and then retested and kind of held. Again, is this that higher low? We'll only know after the fact, right? If if things break down below this, you know, 463-ish area, that's a different story. But you know, so far, so good. Now, this 200-day is starting to roll over a little bit, so price needs to kind of hurry up and get back above it. Um, but that's not a bad-looking, you know, scenario if that, that is a higher low. 
you know here's the iwm again this is a bear flag look to it and does it get one more low does it come down here and actually you know finish its way down to 165 ah, you know i don't know it doesn't have to right I and mean, that was a scenario i drew in it's still a very possible scenario you do have the 200 day declining you know you have the 50 day you have the death cross you have all this stuff it doesn't have to come all the way down we'll find out is this the higher low again and that, that's the question is this the higher low we get small cap growth again you know this one came almost all the way down here maybe has one more leg you know maybe uh maybe that was it right maybe this line actually goes and should be up here or something like that and it got pretty darn close i don't know could be maybe i just <laughs> make my hedge my bets and just do the whole way right i mean we don't know where the support is until after the fact i guess that's my my, my point here but this got pretty pretty good maybe there's one more push down into this green shape boxy area but we're getting pretty pretty close to there and if you're in the camp that the world isn't ending and the market's not going to zero well there will be a place to find some support and maybe it's just a bounce for a couple of weeks or a month we don't know well, maybe it comes back and retest overhead supply over here at 280 you know, because it's so extended from the 200 day moving average, it, you know, so anyway, there's a lot of scenarios out there, but just let's keep an open mind that it doesn't have to roll over here. This could be a higher low and maybe we do get, and maybe it is just a counter trend rally. Maybe longer term, we are in a more of a bear market, but this counter trend rally could last a month or two, um, just to be aware of. XLF, nice work out of XLF this week above all its moving averages everything's moving higher again um looks really really good so xlf is definitely participating smh um not quite as good we talked about how this was wide and loose um and it did end up breaking down from that held in the support area down here that i drew in um above the 200 day again so that's a positive uh still suspect so i would like to see this obviously start to recover some of these moving averages and get above, you know, this get above and hold above 276 ish. Um, and then we, we could see what's going on there. So uh, SMA is not the, the best looking chart, to be honest. Uh, looking at wood, you know, wood isn't saying the end of the world is coming, it's recovered some. So um, back above this area. You know, this looks like the right side of maybe some kind of base, which is, I think, very constructive. Um, I, I like the way that looks. VIX is pulling in, right? I mean, we had this big spike up here, you know, last week, uh, you know, two weeks ago, whatever this was. And now it's really pulled in and, uh, and seems like it's coming back under control again. So that's nice to see. Put call ratio equity only let's go and get rid of these moving averages because i like it without it there we go and yeah so we had the spike here and this may have been enough and we talked about that you know we didn't i didn't know if it needed to go to this extreme or not and it may not this may be enough and it's been enough in the past that was pretty good so far it looks like it could be if we are making that higher low right so don't know i mean we do have you know higher lows here so people are starting to every time things recover a little bit the dip buyers come in it seems like they're less and less uh, bullish uh, which is good if we did get that spike that would be a, a huge signal um, but again it doesn't have to be and if you look here we had a spike into this range back in February 25th and you can see it took you know a few weeks for it to get very very bearish again um, I'm sorry, January 30th, and then went to February 25th. So that's almost a month, right? And this was actually a decent time to be in the market, and then it just fell apart. That's COVID. Um, but all in all, put call ratio, sentiment indicator. We did have that one pretty good spike into this area. Again, we could have a few weeks, could be a month, could be a much longer, who knows, where things may be okay. We get breath. 
you know, breath is still not great. Um, it's only at 30% above the 50 day moving average. Um, that's nothing to write home about. It's not extreme low, like, uh, you know, but it's still not, not great. We don't know if we're going to get there or not. We could, you know, recover just, just from, you know, when it was 20% not too long ago. Um, we'll see. But again, no real signal there. We can't bond ratios. So, you know, bond ratios are interesting because when you really look at them, they're not signaling and have never signaled the end of the world is coming, right? You know, this is nasty, right? And let's just go to weekly so you see like some historical precedents. You know, um, this was 2008, right? This was, you know, 2011, 12, nastiness, right? 2016, right? 15, 16, right? 2020. Boom. Well, this looks nothing like any of these at all, like nothing. So to me, the bond market is saying this is just another run of the mill correction to get valuations back in check. Nothing really to be too worried about. Um, so, you know, somebody posted on Twitter the other day that, oh, you know, bond ratios, they're not really working or whatever. Well, I would say in contrary, maybe they are. They're saying don't get too too worried about what's going on yet because the bond market's not too worried about it. That's the way I look at this particular ratio. That's the way I'm approaching the market, at least currently. I'm looking at uh, 10 year yield. We had a nice bull flag that we talked about here. I think 2% is gonna be the magnet. It's <laughs> had a nice strong move up that way, 1.931. Um, so 2%, I think that that's priced in already. You know, above 2%, that would be, uh, you know, the different story if we get to the 3% range, you know, or, or start to break out above it. But as of right now, um, yeah, I think 2% is going to be, is, is, is probably priced into the market already um, because the market is forward looking. So, and again, let's just show you a weekly chart where all my lines are, just so you can have an idea. You know, here, this is from 1981, right? The peak, beautiful downtrend line. So in the end, it was still a downtrend up until we hit this, <laughs> this line, right? Um, so 3%, there's 2% right there, 3% is right above it. Let's go back to a daily. You know, we're gonna hit this downtrend line. There's 3%, if we start breaking above those or into those, that could be more of a serious situation. Um, but, I don't think, um, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I think 2% is pricing for sure, though. And that's why, as they rose on Friday, we didn't see a major, major sell-off in the market, probably because it's already priced in. Looking at gold, um, again, let's go back to the weekly on the gold chart. You know, just a beautiful pattern that's a decade plus in the making, Um you know, and does it break? I don't know. I mean, it hasn't broken down yet. Um, but again, if people aren't freaking out about, you know, buying gold, supposedly a safe haven, then I'm not too worried um, about the market, right? We will see. Now let's go from gold to the uh, opposite, which is Bitcoin and, you know, the riskiest of the risk assets. And I think... This 11% pop right here was really important. I'm putting a lot of emphasis on this because this was a very strong looking bear flag. And there's your break. And what happened? Boom. Buyer stepped in and they stepped in strong. Let me see if volume gives us any more ideas. What's going on here? Good volume on this too. Um, but they stepped in and they stepped in strong. And when we really expand and look at it, they broke above the area that was important. You know, we're above this 41,000 area. I think that's a, that's a really important, if we see continued strength this weekend, I think that uh, that, that bodes very well for stocks and, and growth stocks. There's your 200 day, still rising, look at that. There's your 50 day, let's just see what some of these, there's your 23 day moving up. There's, yeah, so, so you have the short term moving averages starting to really start to, 
you know, curl up. You have the 50 day that needs to start to flatten out. Maybe it's going to start soon if price can kind of keep moving higher. Um, yeah, this is all looking really, really good. Um, again, Bitcoin being the riskiest of the risk, it not breaking down when technically on this February 2nd date, it should have, right, from its nice looking bear flag, but it didn't. Um, and that's one of the things that has me um, much more bullish, again, being the riskiest of the risk. If people are putting money to work here, um, I think at least short term, there could be a, a higher low in the market and, and a potential bottom being put in. Are we out of the woods yet? Absolutely not. Can this roll over? Absolutely. Um, but I did make some purchases in, on, on Friday because I do think that things are starting to, to recover some. Now, I will base those on a stock by stock basis, not on, you know, don't really care what the index does at this point because I got to manage those positions. Um, but chances are, the index will be making higher highs and higher lows if my stocks tend to work out. And if the index rolls over, it'll probably pull those down with them. Um, I don't like that the index is still under the 200 day on the queues. I think at least the SPX was not, right? It's above, but the queues are still under. Uh, so what I'm watching for this week is a recovery of this level, 365, 366. If 365 and 366 get recovered and we can make a higher high here, that would be the very, very, very bullish scenario. Um, so that's what I'm looking for this week, hopefully. Again, conversely, a rollover and this, you know, 340, 341-ish, uh, that's support. That's what has to hold anything below that. And it's a bear scenario. Uh, you know, again, bottoming is a process and this was a pretty good pullback you know we were talking top to bottom you know 17 18 percent that's a good that's, that's that's good that that's enough i'll call that you know of a, a bear you know um a correction that was that's enough for me right i don't need to, have to go to 20 percent um that's a correction a lot of growth stocks got hurt even way more than that and so that may be enough right let's 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 make sure we keep a look at both sides of, of the coin right um you know and again i want this to be a higher low because i i like to be on the long side of stocks i, I don't want to be in cash uh i'm about 75 percent invested currently um and because i added two positions on um on friday and uh and again we will see what happens. So stay safe out there. Good luck with everything this week. Keep an open mind. Let price action dictate what's going on. I think that, um, you know, looking every, at everything, I think that uh, there's a lot of positives that may be forming under the surface in the market. And and this is a time where we can kind of, um, you know, hopefully um, maybe take advantage of it. Let's just see. Something like this, maybe. I'm just kind of looking here. Yeah, a, a very short term, this would be the line. Chances are it's going to have, have another out here that we're going to be able to, to put this line to. But for right now, I think that may be a trend line that could be significant. Anyway, you all have a good week out there. If Oh, before I go, like and subscribe. If you haven't done that already, please. I really do appreciate that. You can find me on Twitter at alphacharts365 posting all day long my thoughts um my scans and so on and so forth bye